Ralph Sanji, WGSO. President of the United States of America. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covetousness. Battle of New Orleans Radio with your hosts, Nathan Lawrence, Caleb Hitt, and Goyle on 990 WGSO. In eight- Welcome to Battle of New Orleans Radio. We've got Nathan Lawrence in the field along with Goyam. They are not just sitting around. They're taking action and they're in the field right now. Tonight, I'm more than honored to be the guest host and I have the super hot weather girl. We have Raphael O'Neill who is all over chemtrails and everything else. Now we've got a loaded show, so you want to say hey to everyone? Hello, everyone. All right. So we've got a, I mean, mega loaded show tonight. We've got John Hankey, one of the uh, premier JFK guys. And we've got Dr. Jim Fetzer. We've got Don Fox. And Don Fox pulls no punches. There's no doubt about that. And so we're going to be talking a lot of Trump tonight. We'll see how it goes. So what, what do you think about the inauguration? There seems to be a lot of true threats that they might even take out Trump before the whole thing starts. Well, because- what about that Pizzagate thing? Did- <laughs> I mean, we- no, no, I'm not talking about Pizzagate. I mean, at Comet Ping Pong, the Veritas just un- unraveled a, a plot. They have it on record. They turned it into the FBI where they were going to put a stink bomb in the building of the, inaugur- of the, the uh, inauguration. Uh, yeah. The Whoa. deplorable, they're calling it. Oh, boy. And those tell him. They have that head of the in, on Service. video, and it was at the Comet Ping Pong that they were having this conversation of what all they can do or get the, the people out in, in, in sprinklers, get the sprinklers to go off, and then everybody will be cold and just mm-hmm. ruin the... Actually, the head of the Secret Service is going to resign the moment that Trump takes place. So I think he's a smart man. I think he will uh, have his own security. But, I mean, it's a very precarious situation. And if you would just type in... JFK, Trump, and the list of enemies, it's uh, very, very similar to what happened. So there's uh, quite a few people we'll be talking about tonight. Will they actually try to take Trump out? I mean, he's not going along with what everyone else is saying. Yeah, I'm having a hard time myself making a decision. I I actually, for the first time in my life, did not vote, and not out of apathy, but out of boycott. I decided to let democracy play its own hand. First time I voted for, not only I voted for Obama, but I campaigned for him. Second time I went third party. And this time I, you know, I have a hard time trusting it. My heart broke after Obama, I'll be honest. And so oh. I really, I, I, I would love for Trump to be the third party in a Republican suit that we're hoping he is. I mean, at least Clinton didn't win. Oh, my God. Thank God. There's some hope. But how much? And, you know, the powers that be, look at what they did with Christianity, right? They kill Jesus. Then when it's everybody's following him, they take over the religion. That's what the powers that be do. And um, my ex-Illuminati boyfriend is convinced he's one of them, that they actually fixed them and designed that from way, way before. And look, let me tell you, when I was a little girl, uh, my mother told me she used to be an actress in France hobnobbing with polit- politicos who were probably Masons. And when Daddy Bush ran for office, she told me she was told that a man named Bush would bring about the Third World War. And so ever since that time, I was looking for uh, the war that was coming. And the first Iraq war, Gulf War, it was my first protest. Then it didn't turn into much of anything. I said, well, maybe my mama was wrong. And then we saw Junior come around. And when I saw on September 11th, that second plane hit the building, or at least what was shown to me, I didn't think, oh, my God, what the hell? I thought, here we go. Yeah, so, something wasn't right. <laughs> so how did my mom know back in the 70s that a man named Bush would bring about the Third World War? They planned things out. So hopefully, you know, time will tell well, ultimately. I realize we want it all, okay? But there are things that are being brought up, like the Central Intelligence Agency need to be roped in more. And also vaccines. He's saying that we need to look more into vaccine. Now, look, we never I heard that. I love him for that. I love that. Okay? And look, well, if we only yeah. got that, we've gotten more than we did the past eight years. Exactly. So, exactly. 
Because that right. is fascism. If you have four, pro, four mandatory vaccines and you want to stick your little prick in me or my baby without my consent, that's medical rape. That's what the Nuremberg Code was about. That's why my grandfathers went to the concentration camps to not to fight fascism. And that mm-hmm. is fascism. And, and mm-hmm. California is mandatory on that. So if he can reverse that, I will tell you what. I'm going to have to give him a well, big old it, hug and a like juicy said, kiss, even though he's not my type. <laughs> right. Okay. We've got our special guest tonight, Mr. John Hankey, the master of the YouTube video. There's a video called JFK 2. It's also called Dark Legacy. It's got the most views of any JFK-related video. He is the only person to have a video out there about John F. Kennedy Jr. So if you, ha- if you don't know about John F. Kennedy Jr., there's really only one video to watch about that uh, i'm sure there's other ones but hanky was way ahead of the game so welcome to the show john hanky hey gary how you doing doing all right so um we we know you're all over jfk J- jfk jr 9-11 you're in the oswald innocence campaign but um right now i guess the uh, subject of the hour is is trump and uh just just tell me your view on trump and what about these um this uh, chitter chatter of assassination of uh, Trump. Assassination of Trump. Yes. So you're not. Um, have you been he- hearing that chatter? I haven't been hearing that chatter. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it, it, there's just there's just so much misinformation. It it, it strikes me that um, you know I put out my video about JFK to the Bush connection right from the start for like ten years ago and maybe mm-hmm. more than that. She's closer to 15. And it was the only thing out there. And, and there wasn't a flood of garbage that you could get on YouTube. But now it seems, it strikes me that... Yeah, there's too much stuff states, out there. Too much disinformation. Would you say it's oh, accelerated lately? They've, oh, absolutely. They, they figured it out. Yeah. In, in my observation, they have figured out that this is the way the game is played. And, you know, it's... It, what was I think it was Turkey? It, it doesn't matter. It might have been Turkey. It might have been India. And somebody was complaining, "Oh, isn't this terrible?" That the government has said, "Well, look, when somebody puts out a video that we don't like, we're not, and that we think is unfair and, and not true, we're not going to suppress it, but we're going to answer it." And I don't know, you know, where anybody is at, but. Um, and this isn't what we were supposed to talk about. But yeah, well, go ahead and you can go on to the topic. I'm just saying that there's many, many similarities that he's really saying that the CIA needs to be scaled back. He's talking about vaccinations. He's really there's he has so many enemies and the Secret Service, the head of the Secret Service is going to resign the moment he takes office. I know you know about the Secret Service in Dealey Plaza, so we don't have to go there. There's a guy named Robert Reich. R-E-I-C-H. And, you know, he's very liberal. He's pro-labor. He's pro-ordinary people, right? He, he writes a column. I don't know where it gets published, but I'm, I'm subscribed to Reader Supported News. I should plug them because it's really, really a fine news service, and it's free, although they pester you to make a donation. But Reader Supported News, and, and they quote Robert Reich all the time. And, you know, he's for any anything that helps the ordinary person, he's for it, and anything that You know, when there's a scheme of the billionaires to rip people off, um, he's against it and he exposes it. So, you know, I think he's a good guy. I like him a lot of the time. And he was complaining that Trump has his own security people. Mm -hmm. He's not relying on the Secret Service. Smart (laughs) move. (laughs) You think? Where's the complaint? (laughs) Why? I mean, and, but this stuff is all so interesting, I think. Anyway... There's a guy named David Talbot, and David Talbot, um, Gary knows, has written two really excellent books. One of them is called Brothers. It's about John and Robert Kennedy, and it's got really good stuff about the Kennedy assassination. It's so unusual. I mean, this is all I've done for 45 years, and it's so unusual for me to read a book and learn anything. And I read that book and, and ran into some really, really hot stuff. And he, then he wrote one about Alan Dulles and about how Alan Dulles, the head of the CIA, he thinks was in charge of the Kennedy assassination. So this is a guy who you would think would be very anti-CIA and who you would think could be, you know, sympathetic towards Trump. And he brings in Daniel Ellsberg. 
And I don't know to what extent people know Daniel Ellsberg. Daniel Ellsberg is he's a favorite on the left, which is a huge mistake. He's totally a CIA operative. The Pentagon Papers, which is what he's famous for, quote, releasing, unquote, was written by the CIA in order to be released. It is the CIA's version of events in, in Vietnam. It's just garbage, but he's this darling, like Edward Snowden, who's the same guy, as far as I'm concerned. And, and Julian Assange, it, poor little Bradley Manning, right? He's got sentenced to 35 years, and, and hooray and hallelujah, he's, they're going to let him go. Um, but he's, he went to prison for 35 years for releasing stuff, I have to believe, must have contained something explosive. He hands it over to Julian Assange, and we didn't see anything explosive coming out of Julian Assange. We didn't see anything from WikiLeaks that wasn't very pro-Israel and essentially taking the, the right. It did not shake things up. It did. It there was nothing. There were there were things that were embarrassing to other countries. There was nothing that was embarrassing to Israel. There was nothing about 9/11, right? And WikiLeaks can kiss my behind. For Thank you. For their failure to pick up any 9/11 related issue, and and Snowden as well, right? Anyway, the point is, uh, I wanted to tell people there's an article written by a guy. His name is K I R I A K O U, and I should say that a couple more times so you can write it down. And, and I'll say it again later. You, let me tell you what it says. Uh, he's a former CIA agent. And he says they need to get rid of the CIA. And then he the, the really great thing about the article is he's got this long list of the things that the CIA has. I mean, besides assassinating Kennedy, right? He, Taking he, over a couple hundred also, countries. Fake news. Well, I got to say, though, with all the harassment on Facebook, if we take out the CIA, the economy is going to crash because it <laughs> seems to be employing a lot of people. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I think we can find other jobs. Yes, I'm you good know, with that. They, they, they can help blind people cross the street and, and help old ladies, uh, you know, bring bring hot meals to to old people. I don't have a problem with that. And, you know, they can pay them the same salary as far as I'm concerned, but give them some decent, honest work. Anyway, he points out that the CIA denied that they were torturing people, period. And it was a total lie. They denied that they had secret prisons where they were torturing these hundreds of innocent people. Total lie. They denied, they, they got asked because they were confronted with it, that they had a torture dungeon in Afghanistan called the Salt Pit. They denied it. It turned out to be totally true. So that, that denial was a lie. Um, you know, everybody that they have, every single person they have tortured a confession out of, called Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, everybody in Afghanistan are totally innocent. Yeah. Hang hang tight there, John. We're going to be right back. We've got Raphael Neal. My name's Gary King. I'm very, very proud to be sitting in for Nathan Lawrenson. We've got Caleb, Scott, Caleb on Skype. Caleb hit. Well, we want you to call in there, Goyim. Uh, give us a field report. We'll be right back. This is WGSO Battle of New Orleans. All right, welcome back to Battle of New Orleans Radio. Some of you folks might remember me uh, from a while back. We had Patriot Radio New Orleans, and every single week there was always a chemtrail update with our super hot weather girl, Raphael O'Neill. Like it or not, she's been giving a chemtrail weather report for over 10 years, and there is no other person than you can name, and she's the biggest advocate. She puts, what, Rosalind Peterson... To shame. Just oh, no, absolute I don't shame. know about that. I don't so, know about that. All right, we got John Hankey <laughs> on the phone for one more segment. Now, you, now callers, if you're going to call in and, and talk to John, we want you to be on topic there with a question for John. Come on back on, John, and uh, finish up what you were talking about. Uh, well, okay, so let me plug the realhistorychannel.com. And if you go to YouTube and, and search for the Real History Channel, there's all sorts of stuff. There, the Orlando shooting was, um, I think, very clearly an operation. It, it, there's just a ton of research. It, yeah, that one's bad. So clearly, a police operative. So, so that's my plug for 
for my mm-hmm. own and, and current work. But what I keep getting smacked in the face with really hard is the parallels between Trump and Nixon. Nixon was in Dallas the day that Kennedy was murdered. Nixon was a um, war criminal. He was a monster. He, you know, bombed Cambodia. He, it's estimated that he's responsible for killing two million people in Southeast Asia, Cambodia, Laos, and, and Vietnam alone. So I'm not sympathetic to Nixon, but they, Ehrlichman and Haldeman and, and um, who's my boy, Webster Tarpley and I all say that the CIA set Nixon up. It wasn't his idea. It, nobody knows why anybody broke into the Democratic Party headquarters except that, says Ehrlichman and Haldeman and me and Tarpley, it was to set Nixon up to be impeached. And, you know, I see so many of the same flavors and stuff going on right now with with Trump. And it isn't, I don't think that Trump is an especially good guy, but you don't have to be a very good guy to be on these guys' hit list, as Nixon was, you know, like I'm saying, a, a war criminal. He was involved in a key way, I think, in the Kennedy assassination. I don't think that he's a good guy, but he was trying to be independent, and so they took him out. And I think that that's what we have with Trump, is that, you know, he's, he's for tax cuts for billionaires. He's for getting rid of health care for people who can't afford it. And, and he's for increasing the defense budget dramatically. So where's, where's the rub? Why is it that they have a problem with this guy? And I think one of the things that it, if, if you haven't, you should go back and watch the debate where where Trump rips Jeb and the entire Bush family, just rips them a new one, um, about how they lied about weapons of mass destruction and, says Trump, they knew it when they said it. And, you know, you never heard a Democratic candidate saying stuff like that. Um, he, he was very, very hard on them, and, and they took it really hard. I think Jeb and, well, the, and the entire Bush clan and all of the people, you know, they, I think those guys represent the deep state. And... Pence is their errand boy, right? I, I did a piece. That's if you don't do anything else, Google my name, H-A-N-K-E-Y-N, Pence, and find that video. Pence, during immediately after 9-11, was absolutely just the errand boy of the perpetrators yeah, of the 9-11. anthrax, right? Wanted for. And he just, he went after the head of the FBI, whose name is uh, not coming to me, but, it, you know, he was a... This guy's a loyal Republican, hardcore, staunch Republican, and, and advocate for for war on on Muslims, but Ashcroft. But he was he was honest. And w- when the anthrax attacks occurred, he's the head of the FBI. He puts the FBI and and the scientists on it, and they look at it and they come back and say, "This anthrax came from U.S. government stockpile." <laughs> and Ashcroft said, "Oh." And Pence is writing this guy, is writing Ashcroft threatening letters saying, how can you say those things? Can't you see that this, this, this anthrax clearly came from Iraq? Well, it didn't clearly come from Iraq. In fact, the, uh, everything that, that Pence had said about how the evidence showing that it came from Iraq was contradicted in, in my video. It's contradicted by the leading scientist in the investigation at a news conference that Pence was was where he was present, and Pence introduces this guy who comes in and says this stuff so that Pence has no problem in lying for the benefit of the deep state, lying for the benefit of the guys who want war on whoever it is that they want war on for whatever reason that they want a war on these guys this week. And they want Trump. I think maybe they're trying to give him a heart attack. Certainly they're giving him a golden shower on his inauguration. <laughs> Just hang on. We're going to have you on for just a minute or so on the other side of the break. This is Patriot. Okay. No, I'm sorry. This is Battle of New Orleans Radio <laughs> with Raphael Neal, Gary King. we got Caleb Hit, and we're sitting in for Nathan and Goyam. Welcome back. To Battle of New Orleans Radio, we got Raphael O'Neill, myself, John Hanke on the line. So, John, we've got another guest. Just go ahead and finish up what you were saying. And I do want to say realhistory.com. Is that is that the uh, right website? The Real History Channel. The Real History Channel. This is John Hanke's own work. He's putting these videos together. On YouTube, for, right? Yeah, for your benefit. And it's real history. It's a really good 
way to go about it. Right. Now, I want everyone to know that John Hankey is a, is a history teacher. He's taught history for a million years and found out that he didn't know anything. So that's why he's got the Real History Channel, so he can bring some real history, because you, you know you won't get it in school. The BBC said that this guy, Christopher Steele, who was, who was breaking the golden shower story, right, the, the MI6 uh, spy, the BBC said that he was hired by Jeb Bush. And then they said, oh, we misspoke, which is, you know, ridiculous. How, how do you misspeak? And Something like that. that. And, it, and, it, and I think it's perfectly obvious. When you look at the timing of all of this stuff, I think it's very, very clear that the Bushes and the deep state people are behind this golden shower story. Um, but they were also, I think, behind um, the hacking of, I think that they were behind the hacking of the emails. I think it was the, the Bush campaign that was behind the hacking of Podesta's emails. Um, and they used Russians to do it, but that's not the Russian government, right? Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it, it, this is all very, very, very interesting stuff. It, it, yeah, my take on that, John, is that that was fake news. So once again... Not only is it multifaceted, but it's going to be used for people that are trying to bring the truth, is what my concern is. Well, this, this whole business of, yes, there's a campaign, and you've seen it, where you have fake news. There is really, you know, there's there was just a flood, right? Hillary's dying. You remember that one? Mm -hmm. what, what happened to that story where Hillary was dying? And, and it, I'll tell you what, everything, every major accusation I've ever seen about Hillary that I took the time to research, I found, was the opposite of the truth, and, and we don't have to go down that road right now, but um, the point is that then they said, oh, there's all this fake news, and they start pointing to uh, the Corbett Report, and a lot of... And, That's a good uh, channel. Authority. Huh? Yeah, the Corbett Report's a great channel. Oh, it's a great show. That's and like the really least fake really, channel really you can get. <laughs> mm -hmm. They started pointing at all of these very, very solid investigators and reporters and lumping them in with the fake news, and I, I don't think that that's an accident. Well, you know what happened with the 2017 NDAA, right? That we had another little gift from Obama. Um, we, we know that in, in 2012, he destroyed the, the most of the Bill of Rights with the adding of Americans on the indefinite detention without charge or trial list. And he said he wasn't going to sign it, but Senator Levine actually confirmed that it was Obama's office that added Americans to the list. And so he said he wasn't going to sign it. Everybody goes home for Christmas, and then he signs it. Well, now we have, what, the, only the First and Second Amendment really left. We've got enough psyops to try and remove a, the Second Amendment from the hearts of Americans, and most are <laughs> foolish enough to fall for it. And uh, the first, he's going now for the First Amendment, where they added this Ministry of Truth, where they're going to uh, cock, oh, oh, sorry, I was going to say something, block um, <laughs> the, the, um, Propaganda, which of right. course you know, the, if that's not the fox guarding the hen house, uh, I don't know, I don't know what, what is. <laughs> so, but John, look, we've been appreciated you being on and your insights and stuff like that. So, uh, go ahead and give your website one more time and anything else you want to plug. Um, no, that's it. The, the Real History Channel dot com and go to YouTube and and search for the Real History Channel. There's a lot of stuff. I spent a lot of time doing a lot of work. Um, to try to, and and you know I'm just getting started, right? I got a 30 year plan to try to rewrite all of this. It, this actually, this is something I wanted to say. People, you and Gary and I have been good friends for how many years? Ten years? It's Since been Katrina, a while, mm -hmm. right? And we disagree about all sorts of things, but you don't learn talking to people that you agree with. You learn talking to people that you disagree with. And I've learned a, a whole lot of stuff from Gary and. It, you know, it's, people have to learn this business of being respectful and having a respectful conversation with people that they, uh, that they disagree with and, and learning how to have respect for somebody else who's chasing after the truth and be able to see things differently but still um, be able to exchange information. Um, one of the things that I wanted to say to Gary, Gary and I got into a thing about some plane that, that had crashed and they sprayed foam on it and... Anyway, let that one go. The, the thing is, the place I think that you need to look is the history books. And that, what, if you want to start rejecting everything, 
See, I don't think all of the media lie all of the time. They only lie about the important stuff, right? There's, okay. There's a lot of good information. Yes, in there. there is a cake and, sale going on next week. Well, no. I mean, if, if you look at this, this for example, all this, this golden shower stuff and all of that reporting, the BBC, you could find it. The BBC named Jeb Bush. And, you know, I had already assembled the evidence to suggest that it was the Bushes who were behind um, all of this stuff. All of this Some people are stuff. saying that Obama is actually, excuse me for interrupting, but uh, this is theory here. I don't have enough fact to go with it, but a kind of an offspring of the Bush family, uh, an implant. And well, since we don't really know who he is, <laughs> anything is possible. Who, who are you speaking of? Of Obama. Uh, of Obama. That Obama is, that the Bush line c- continues, basically. With Obama. Yeah, I mean, I don't have anything to, I... to back that up with, but. <laughs> well, and so I was, anyway, anyway. Listen, I was I was saying about getting out the history books. Alexander Hamilton was coming down on the whiskey manufacturers, and the whiskey manufacturers are the farmers who live who are too poor to buy land near the shore. So they they have to buy land back up in the mountains, and it's so expensive to try to transport corn or your crop, whatever it is, from up in the mountains down to the shore that they would take the corn manufacture whiskey, and that's what they put the tax on. That George Washington and Alexander Hamilton taxed the poor people, and they didn't tax the rich people because that was their guys. The soldiers who went off to fight for George Washington had never been taxed before. King George didn't pay them, and when they got home, they lost their farms because Washington and Hamilton were now taxing them, and they didn't have any money because they'd gone off to fight the war. They were enormously in debt. They couldn't pay their taxes, and eventually, after years and years and years, they paid them back, right? They paid them in script that they never they never honored, and Washington refused to honor the, the, the paper money that he had given to his soldiers, so, and then they paid them back with Indian land. Uh, John. So, John, are you telling me that John, that uh, George Washington chopping down the cherry tree may be fake history? So, and, we're, and, we're, and that everything you see going on today has been going on since 1776. Oh, All you. that's different is the technology. Yeah, the same way they had the the, the four minute men at the beginning of the century. But anyway, John, thanks again for being on the show. Everyone, go to the Real History Channel Seven and also, tonight. yeah, and also go type in JFK two or Dark Legacy. I believe it is. Is that how do you say it? Dark Legacy? Dark Legacy or JFK to the Bush Connection. Dark Legacy mm-hmm. is the tour. Yeah, great videos, Dark great videos. All right, we've got another guest coming up, so appreciate it, John. Thank you very much. Okay, we've got all surprise guests tonight. Next up, we've got Don Fox, the man who has got his own blog spot. We'll let him tell you about that. Now, Joseph, hang tight. We are going to get to you. We want you to ask a question of Don Fox. And then, Phil, we're going to let you in as, um, as soon as we get Don going. So y'all hang tight on us, and you're all part of the show, and we will get to everyone, we promise. So, Don Fox, welcome to the show. Hey, good to be here, Jerry. How's it going? Uh, well, we're not sure. We've got two days left before Trump's <laughs> inauguration. No telling. We've got to be in for a few surprises, at least a couple of false flag, fake stories. I mean, they're, they're, we're having a... a Airport shooting every five minutes now, and uh, there's a you know shooting at the mall and everything else. So we all we've got Raphael with us tonight. So um, hi Don. Hello. Yeah, yeah. You know, Don's interviewed uh, Raphael quite a few times on his show, and um, Don and I do a JFK show once a week with Dr. Fetzer and um, that kind of stuff. So Don, talk to us about um, current events and as far as this what what you're seeing as far as the Trump campaign or the Trump wagon goes. Well, I think we're going to see some just, you know, some destabilization in Washington, D.C., but, you know, a lot of people think they're going to assassinate Trump, you know, right when he's got his hand on the Bible taking the oath, and I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think he's I think he's safe for, you know, probably several months into his <laughs> Well, he must be yeah. feeling really good about that. <laughs> well, I, I think they'll, they'll, they'll try to co-opt him first. And control him, and if that fails, then, then, then you know, I think, you know, when you get in towards the maybe June, July, August time frame, 
you know, in the, maybe in the fall. Maybe okay. Well, sort of in the fall. well, Don, you know, talk to us about forward. the things that he's um, involved with that are a threat to him. Well, I think, okay, the, the, the people that he's up against are, you know, are, are age-old enemy. Because what is, above all, what does Trump really stand for, okay? Well, what he campaigned on was you know, the uh, building the wall on Mexico. So he believes in borders and nations and, you know, the nation state. Okay, well, the traditional enemies of our country here are, these are people that are internationalists. They don't believe in borders. Um, they want to flood all of our countries with unlimited immigrants um, and blend us out of existence. So just by the mere fact of Trump saying, hey, the United States has borders and the United States has a right to exist, Europe has a right to exist, Germany has a right to exist, France has a right to exist, England has a right to exist, this is, this is directly in opposition to the people that um, are our enemies. And these are the same people that were behind the French Revolution. They were behind the Bolshevik Revolution. Um, they were behind the Kennedy assassination and 9-11. Yeah, uh, tell us about your um, blog spot it's, um, for 9-11. It's, pro- it's the top research in 9-11 today out there. Don Fox is, is the number one. I'll just say it flat yeah. out. Yeah, so it, it's actually a WordPress blog. It's uh, donaldfox.wordpress.com. Dot com. Yeah. So I've got the the free WordPress blog and um, no advertising. If you see ads on there, they're not mine. They WordPress gets that revenue. Yeah, we know the, the truth does not pay, Don. We're very aware of that. You wouldn't be working two jobs, and neither would I, if the truth paid. Because, boy, we bring a lot of it. But, boy, my pocketbook is not swelling at all. So, all right, we're going to have a question for you there. We're going to take a caller. We're going to take Joseph from Metairie. Then we've got Caleb, is our guest host. Our, our other host is going to ask a question as well. So go ahead, Joseph. We've got Don Fox on the line. Well, uh, this is about Trump. Uh, well, uh, you know, he's the man of the hour. Let's say that. Uh, I'd like to have someone actually check this out and see if this is, le- is legitimate. Someone showed me on Facebook about almost three days ago, uh, something that appeared, and it, it, it looks like it, it really <laughs> is true. Um, there was an old TV show on CBS called Trackdown. And it was a Western. And it was on, it, was, it aired in 1958. And the, the name of the episode was The End of the World. And the, the character that was cast as the bad guy that showed up. Don't tell me. In, Tur- in, in, yeah, in, in this little western town it was Walter Trump. Oh. And, and this, this is for real. Yeah, uh, I know. Robert Cope was one of the actors that was in this episode. Now, Ro- the, the, the Walter Trump is uh, a con man, a confidence man. And this, remember now, this is 1958. This episode, for as I know, was not written by Nostradamus. <laughs> All right. So, so the thing is, I don't, I can't explain this, but listen to how it it, it goes. It gets even, it gets really good. This confidence man called Walter Trump. He has a little uh, uh, sideshow kind of hustle. He, you know, he's he's wearing uh, some sort of robe with, uh, you know, stars and moons on it, like uh, a, a snake oil salesman. And torches are lit, and he has a, this little sideshow thing going on. And he tells the townsfolk, uh, you know, the end of the world is near, I guess, but I can make it go away. Now, this is for real. This, uh, this is part of the show. If, if you help me build a wall. And, and this is strange stuff. I don't understand it. How can an episode like this... Uh, I don't know if, if the, the guy who wrote this up was uh, on something or whatever. Or he was channeling like what old George Norris Coast to Coast. Yes. 
on, on like the Predictive radio. programming. Predictive but, programming. But look, if this is for real, I'd like to see. I'm not going to go tell you how it ends because I don't. I I, I don't, I don't want to. I want to avoid controversy mm-hmm. on this subject. All right, we're, we're up is, against the clock there, Daniel. Comment on that when we get back. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll finish real. up. I want someone to check this out. All right, we're going to get we back with Don Fox. We're going to let you go, uh, Joseph. We appreciate the call, and we'll be back with Don Fox right after the break, and we've got another special guest. Y'all hang tight. All right, welcome back to Battle of New Orleans Radio. I'm proud to be sitting in for Nathan Lawrenson and Goya. Um, we've got Raphael O'Neill, and we've got a very special guest. We've got Dr. Fesser and Don Fox at the same time. We're going to be discussing Trump, and we'll. If, do we have any callers on right now? I'm here, yeah. Gary. I'm yeah. glad to be with you. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Dr. Fetzer. Let's talk a little Trump, and then we're going to have a caller that you actually know personally um, is going to be uh, chiming in in just a second. Well, I'm terribly worried about the threat that was issued last week by a former spook to announce CIA coup Langley taking traitor Trump out now. Former spook John Schindler pronounced on Twitter Thursday night that the CIA is trying to take out President-elect Donald Trump before he is sworn in as president next Friday. January 20th, Schindler has long accused Trump of being a Russian stooge. Schindler's bio for his observer column reads, John Schindler is a security expert and former National Security Agency analyst and counterintelligence officer, a specialist in espionage and terrorism. He's also been a Navy officer and a war college professor. What bothers me, Gary, is that the CIA can only take him out literally Physically, they can't take him out politically or constitutionally. He's already been certified as president. And when I examined the location of the inauguration and put together seven, several recent developments, including that uh, Barack Obama relieved the general who will be in command of the security, the, the District of Columbia National Guard, about 6,000 troops under his command at 12.01. That's one minute after the inauguration is supposed to take place on noon. Uh, not only that, but we know there's going to be many, many organizations that are going to try to protest the Trump inauguration, turn, turn it into one of the biggest riots in history. Rosie O'Donnell has brainlessly tweeted, I fully, fully support imposing martial law. Delaying the inauguration until Trump is She's an of idiot. All charges. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Not just for that. <laughs> the, point is, the point is, it gets the idea out there. It gets yeah. the idea of martial law out there. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm suspicious we're going to see a designated survivor scenario here. The show ceased broadcasting on 14 December. I've been watching it steadily. It's a, the idea that during a a State of the Union address, one member of the cabinet was left behind as the designated survivor unless in, in, should catastrophe strike. The Capitol is actually nuked, and he becomes the president. I notice that signs that uh, George H.W. Bush and Barbara have created a pretext for not being there. They're hospitalized. It appears to me to be completely feigned, and it turned out the designated survivor is going to be a member of the Obama administration. So if you have a catastrophe occur, Obama would immediately declare martial law and we'd have his designated survivor as the new president of the United States. This is my fear. Yeah, how bizarre for this, the Secret Service to be standing down or the head of the National Guard at that particular moment. Wow. And we know about the Secret Service in Dealey Plaza, so this is just bizarre, Dr. Fesser. Well, and, and you did hear about the protesters, that the, the call for protesters for $2,500 a month or something like that? In the papers, Trump protesters? Well, well, Tucker Carlson had this guy on his show yesterday, and he turned out to be a fraud. He's doing that to see how far he can push a fake news story. And he got all the way to Fox with it, already vetted it, and knew the whole thing was a fraud, that he didn't have the company. His fake Facebook page had only been up for like 24 hours, that he had a non-existent co-owner. So that part isn't real. It's not the Secret Service, Gary, that's being ordered to stand down. It's the military guard that would be providing security for the inauguration. The commanding general of the military guard, the, the, the Washington, D.C. National Guard, 
has been ordered to re resign, to leave office, to, to abandon the, the operation, the security operation in its midst, which he said himself was highly unusual. And obviously it's highly unusual. It reminds me, Gary, and you, the, the parallel will come to mind instantly, of Sheriff Bill Decker telling the Dallas Sheriff's Department to stand down, no longer provide security after the JFK motorcade turned from Houston onto Elm. And of course, that was exactly when the, 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 the kill zone uh, took place and Kennedy was shot multiple times. In this case, they're doing a temporal 1201 rather than a geographical corner of Houston and Elm, but I'm completely alarmed. I'm also getting reports that the that, that because the, the Washington Capitol dome was subject to work, we all saw the scaffolding around the dome. The suspicion arises that you could have been the occasion to plant a weapon. Now, uh, uh, I'm thinking in order to conceal the origin, they may do a chemical attack of the kind of gas that was used in Syria so they could blame it on ISIS. That's another alternative because we've got all these memes about ISIS being in the United States ready to strike. It's nonsense on its face, but so is the Russian dossier. It was complete garbage, and yet they're still talking about on on CNN and MSNBC. It's unreal. I have a feeling that the next uh, false flag is going to be on the caliber of 9/11 more than like a school shooting or you know a little airport shooting. It's going to be a well, big one. Big one. Well, this is what I'm talking about. I'm yeah. talking about nuking nuking the Capitol. <laughs> well, that'll get things going. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> you can't get any bigger than that. Absolutely. Don, uh, go ahead and jump in and uh, give us your thoughts. Well, okay, well, um, Antifa is, uh, well, well, they were gearing up to uh, disrupt uh, festivities there in Washington, D.C., you know, specifically the deplorable, but uh, they were infiltrated by uh, uh, Veritas, and uh, so they're, they're going to get charged. They're having to scale back, so... Um, if, yeah, well, well, I'm concerned about Trump getting, you know, something going down this weekend. I don't think they're going to do it, you know, on the inauguration weekend. I, I think, you know, there's some lunatic fringe elements that would, would like to do that. But I, I think they're going to they're gonna let it go. I mean, you know, there was all this hue and cry about, uh, you know, the Electoral College on December 19th. They were all going to change their votes. You know, that didn't happen. Um I, I think Trump is going to be safe getting in. Now, once he's in there, um, you know, I, I think the big threat, I think it's going to be next fall. I think it's really the, the time to watch. I think they're going to try to work on him. I don't think you're going to see a public execution like we did with Kennedy. Um, it's just too much publicity on that. I'd say probably a, a, a plane crash or mo most likely it would be like a poisoning like they did with FDR. All right, well, yeah, go ahead, Dr. Fesser. I disagree with Don. I think this is a unique opportunity for Obama to stay in office because if you have, uh, you know, if you have it taken out right at the inauguration and the designated survivor is a minor member of his administration, uh, he'll turn it over to, to Barack, who, who has boasted that he thought he'd be elected for a third term if he'd had the chance to run against uh, Trump. And where the propaganda campaign attacking Trump, especially over the ridiculous uh, Russian dossier, which even Bob Woodward, who is one of our few remaining investigative journals with any integrity, told Chris Wallace this past weekend on Fox News Sunday, was a garbage document. And we know it's a garbage document because 4chan, from which it originated, claims to have fabricated the anti trump report as a hoax. There's a report from Zero Hedge that lays it out in a story that is getting more surreal by the minute. A post on 4chan now claims the infamous golden shower scene in the unverified 35-page dossier, allegedly compiled by a British intelligence officer, was a hoax and fabricated by a member of the chat board as fan fiction, then sent to Rick Wilson, who proceeded to send it to the CIA, which then put it in their official classified intelligence report on the election. Get this, here's a summary from the editor of 4chan. Let's recap what happened. Paul Axe, that's the name of one of their fans, mailed fan fiction to anti-Trump pundit Rick Wilson about Trump making people pee 
on a bed Obama had slept in. He, he, Rick Wilson, thought it was real and gave it to the CIA. The Central Intelligence Agency of the United States of America and put this in their official classified intelligence report on Russian involvement in the election. Donald Trump and Barack Obama have both read this whole axe fan fiction. The CIA has concluded that the Russians planned to blackmail Trump with his story we made up. Just let that sink in. What have we become? And, of course, he's absolutely right. In fact, all kinds of intelligence experts have said it's an obvious fake, and yet it was being treated as serious stuff by John Brennan in particular, the head of the CIA, whom uh, Wayne Madsen has outed as a Saudi Arabian mole. I mean, it's this bad. We're in a terrible situation because it's John Brennan is a traitor in the midst of our intelligence apparatus. Mm. All right, Dr. Fessler, let's go to the phones. We have a couple of callers that have been on. So, Kathy from Lakeview, welcome to the Battle of New Orleans Radio. Hi. All I can say is, wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm listening to Dr. Fessler, you know me, and uh, I'm thinking, hey, this sounds like Patriot Radio. Um, maybe I should call Kathy H and 76 again. Um, anyway, um, I, I just I'm listening to you. It's just so scary. I mean, it's it's like bringing out all my fears, but you are, you know, you're strategizing them. But the crazy thing is that the elite are using the movie stars to get to the public. So it doesn't matter the blue collar middle class workers is paying all the taxes, what they wanted and what they voted. It matters what Rosie O'Donnell wants. But they're talking about, uh, and I know a lot of times, you know, Nathan um, disagrees with the different people that um, that Trump has brought into his um, office. But I was telling Gary this morning, I said, you know, nobody mentions about the czars. I mean, you know, I was telling people about the czars. They were like, what is a czar? Okay, so we actually looked it up. A czar is a Russian word for person in charge. Isn't that ironic that Obama would come in with 45 czars from the day one? Um, his health and science, science czar uh, was, um, he actually wrote a book on how to kill people after the age of 65. And no one questioned why Obama had 45 czars, but yet, they question every little inkling. You know, I personally feel that, you know, he is grabbing from different areas. And then I think he's going to use his terminology. You know, whatever doesn't work after a few months, he's going to say, you're fired. You know, and, and I applaud him for not just having his little favorites, because he's proving that he's going to be open to different parts of the, you know, the elite or, you know, someone with the oil company, or someone that's a billionaire that, you know, uh, for education. So he's, he's sort of making everybody happy, and then he's going to see if they don't work out, he's going to fire them. You're fired and like I the apprentice. Really, <laughs> right. And I really, you know, I didn't know really about him, but it, the, the crazy thing is I'm not into the numerology and everything, but I heard a talk this morning that just blew me away. Um, it was about how his numbers yeah. all uh, work out. He's going to be 70 years old. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be 70 years old, his seven months too. and seven days. So there's your triple sevens. All right, we're coming up against a break. Kathy, thank you for calling. Roy, hang on. Okay. We're going to get to you next. Dr. Fester, we're going to get your response, and as well as Don Fox, as soon as we get back from the break. Hang tight. This is Battle of New Orleans Radio, WGSO 990 AM. Mechanism to switch him into a post-hypnotic state. That author's background's concerning me. J.D. Salinger was involved in the denazification of... Battle of New Orleans Radio. Raphael O'Neill... We thank you, Kathy, for the call. And um, we've got Dr. Jim Fesser, Don Fox, and we're going to go to the caller real quick and get that taken care of, and then we'll be on to other things. Go ahead, Roy. Um, going by what y'all were talking about, I heard a couple of days ago that the CIA has quietly moved their headquarters to Colorado. Have y'all heard about that? That was a while ago. 
No. Uh, Dr. Fester, John, you have uh, aware of that? Well, uh, that's well, fascinating the whole, because uh, it would certainly it would certainly coincide with nuking the Capitol. Bear in mind, the CIA is used to taking out planes full of hundreds of people in order to kill one. So that if they nuke the Capitol, as I surmise they're planning to do, and if they don't nuke, they may make it a gas attack and blame it on ISIS. Then they're going to get rid of Trump and everyone else there, which is why it's significant that George H.W. Bush and Barbara have invented an excuse to not be there. Now, Barack Obama and, and uh, Michelle are unable to make it for some extraordinary reason. You'll know for a certainty that this is taking place. Hey, they're busy but that Trump, day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They just they, they, they had a conflict in their schedule. Mm -hmm. now, what, what most people don't know is that Wayne Madsen outed John Brennan as a Saudi mole. Listen to this from his Wayne Madsen report for December 2021, 2016. There's a reason why CIA Director John Brennan has done everything possible to interfere with President-elect Donald Trump taking the reins of the presidency on January 20th. As a mole for the Saudi royal family and a convert to Wahhabist Islam, Brennan has no desire to see certain individuals who are well aware of his Islamist beliefs ascend to positions of power in the U.S. intelligence community. The greatest threat to Brennan comes from retired Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, Kept by Trump to become the national security advisor. In 2014, Flynn was fired as director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, by President Obama, who had been advised by Brennan to dump Flynn because the DIA director was producing intelligence policy documents showing that it was a mistake and against U.S. security interests to support Syrian jihadists who are trying to topple Syrian President Bashir al-Assad. For Brennan's Saudi and Wahhabist controllers, that was tantamount to blasphemy. And, of course, Flynn is exactly right. We've had no business being in the Middle East and continuing these efforts to topple Assad have come to naught because of Russian intervention. But this is all a derivative from 9-11, which was really inspired by Israel in order to draw the United States into uh, wars in the Middle East to take out the modern Arab states that serve as a counterbalance to Israel's domination of the entire region. Yeah. That's what's going on there. Nothing to benefit the USA, all for Israel. I just wanted to chime in real quick. Uh, it isn't just the CIA that's moving out to Denver. The, uh, depending on who you believe or you know what's going on out there, there's a whole underground capital underneath the Denver airport is, is what the rumors are. Just amazing. Yeah, uh, Roy's hung up. So, um, I, I get... oh, no, no, Don's, Don's 100% about that. There's been a lot of... Uh, Reporting, you know, from from sources that are, are not widely disseminated, that there's an immense, yes, a whole city underneath a Denver airport. There's weird New World Order kinds of paintings in the airport, murals that are very, very strange unless you know how to interpret them. And that this should be going on would, of course, be perfectly consistent with taking out Washington, D.C., even turning it radioactive. Well, let me just say something, that the powers that be have no problem taking out their own men. Sometimes you, you confiscate, you know, you sacrifice the, uh, the, the knight to save the king or, you know, the project. It's the project that keeps moving forward and everybody else is just a puppet. So they're expendable. They're not as, you know, even if Obama was uh, in D.C., that, that, that wouldn't necessarily protect him. Everybody is disposable. For the greater good. I just want to say one quote here, uh, and you can tell, maybe you can guess who said it. In politics, nothing is accidental. If something happens, be assured it was planned this way. FDR. Exactly. Uh, oh, oh, no. Uh, but, yeah, Franklin oh, rose up. Yeah. And he knew where I he just think that there, There's discussion all over the internet and on the social media about the CIA planning to assassinate Trump. This is a very serious matter. I'm. Sorry to say. Oh, no, and, and uh, Roger Stone, his confidant, is claiming um, that he was poisoned with some sort of plutonium or... Pl right. Roger Stone? That's, uh, yep. I knew I heard the story, but I didn't know it was Roger Stone. I was actually at a conference with him last uh, last week. All right, Don, uh, we got a minute left before the break. Go ahead and uh, give us your thoughts, and we'll be um, hearing, coming back from the break in just a minute. Okay, I just wanted to say real quick, you know, not that they, they have a moral problem with nuking Washington, D.C. or taking out Trump. They nuked the Pentagon on 9-11, for God's sake. I just think that uh, if, if they were to do, pull something like that on, on Inauguration Weekend or whatever, 
it would just be bad for business. The, the, you know, the, the country would just totally lose confidence in the system, and I, I don't think they're ready to do that yet. I think there's certain elements that would like to do that. I just I don't think it's going to happen. But, yeah, there's so just I, a I tenseness in the air that something is going to happen, and uh, we'll discuss more of it. This is P- Battle of New Orleans Radio. We'll be right back with Dr. Jim Fetzer, Don Fox, Raphael O'Neill, and myself. Gary King. This is PJ Lorenz. We have finally figured it out. At first, we thought it was the Eskimos. But now there's a strong consensus amongst experts. It's an entirely different animal. If I had it's the Eskimos. The to me, to make the world <laughs> it's the leprechaun. That's Payday Monsanto. One of the, I think one of the top truth musicians out there, period, hands down. It's hard to be Payday Monsanto. All right. You're listening to Battle of New Orleans Radio. If you would like to call in, it's 556-9696. I got Raphael O'Neill with myself. And we're going to go ahead. The co-host who I'm setting in for tonight, Goyim, is on the line. So go ahead, Goyim, and tell us what's on your mind. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, we're, we're holding down the fort for you. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Caleb, uh, you know, we appreciate it. We're trying to keep this show together. So me and Nathan were talking about how the new year, we have so much planned. Payday, Monsanto's moved down here. And, uh, you know, we're all busy with our job. Gary, of course, worked today, but he's filled in and really not filled in, but stepped up as that leader. But my main reason of calling is for our listeners, I know Phil the Patriots on the hold. I really want to make sure Phil, maybe Richie, and a few other listeners show up Friday, along with you there, Gary, Payday, Monsanto, of course, Nathan and myself, we're going to be there Friday afternoon, rain or shine. I'll it looks like see there you be there. A bit of rain. Wait, what's that? I'll see you there with my impeach Obama. Oh, it's too late. Let's throw him in jail. Sign. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we're going to be there at the protest that they've been promoting around the city of New Orleans all the last two months or so. You can also see the uh, propaganda on March for Revolution NOLA Facebook page. They have the... Um, same outline as the plan that they tried to uh, implement with the Andrew Jackson statue in New Orleans, which failed. Uh, but yeah, they're pushing for three o'clock Duncan Plaza, right across from City Hall this Friday, a protest Trump uh, rally. And myself, Nathan, and the rest of the gang of Battle of New Orleans plan to be there. We really want our um, listeners who want to interact with us to come out there. Um, you know, call up the show if you need more information and get our information, and uh, you'll see us out there. We're going to have Battle of New Orleans radio shirts on, and we're going to be pretty visible, and we're going to be like man on the street. We're going to be doing interviews, doing research on who's behind this, as Gary can point right. out. At the last event, and Gary, you can vouch for this, we saw so many Tulane uh, University buses lining up at Congo Square in preparation for the protest of Jackson's statue about three months ago. So anyways... Again, just want to reiterate to our listeners, come on out Friday. Gary, I'll see you there. Payday Monsanto, I'll see you there. At the anti-Trump Chris. rally. <laughs> yes, we're we're going to see what it's all about. To see, see what our enemy is up to, to find out more information, maybe do some interviews of these co-opted paid protesters. And, George Soros uh, funding. Where we go from there. Mm-hmm. All, right, all right. Have a good night. Appreciate it. Great job. We'll see you next week. All right, Don. What do you think about all these uh, planned protests around the country? Uh, we've got one here in New Orleans. Uh, what, what do you make of all this? Oh, I, I think we're going to be in for uh, a lot of agitation, uh, agitprop, you know, as it were. I, I think uh, you know, we haven't heard much from Black Lives Matter lately. I think that's going to get cranked up. But I, I think now the, the main organization they're going to use is the uh, Antifa, um, the anti-fascists. You know, so these people are, um, you know, they're they're very hardcore, uh, funded by the usual suspects, and uh, uh, they're going to be they're going to be making their presence felt. So I, I think we're going to be in for a very bumpy ride here in the next few months. Yeah, what do you think of all these uh, protests, Doctor Fetzer? Well, the Democrats are acting so juvenile. They're so hypercritical. I mean, if the if the 
Hillary had won and the Republicans pulled something like this, there'd be no end to criticism and bashing of the GOP. Well, the Democrats, you know, keep crying and whining when they lost fair and square. Even Michael Moore predicted that Hillary was going to lose the election because she was ignoring the white working class in the Rust Belt states of Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin. And that's exactly how the election played out. She was a terrible candidate. She's massively corrupt. There are all kinds of investigations going on already about the Clinton Foundation. They're going to reopen her use of the email server, but initially believing that James Comey may have abused his position to help Trump. But actually, it's going to turn out he abused his position to help Hillary. And when they dig into all of the emails and the scandals that go directly to Pizzagate, the whole country is going to be appalled and nauseated and be, breathe a sigh of relief that we dodged a bullet by not electing this most corrupt candidate ever for the presidency of the United States. I sure hope so. <laughs> no question about it. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Phil the Patriot, talk to us. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, Phil. Yeah, hey, listen, don't worry, brothers and sisters. I'm definitely going to be there. Good evening, brother and sister, Christian American patriotic hostages. This is an official red, white, and blue patriot alert. (laughs) Coming soon, this Friday, January 20th, 2 p.m., Duncan Bennett's Plaza, New Orleans, Louisiana, City Hall. Don't miss the Donald Trump inauguration party extravaganza stalling the Black Panther Lives Matter movement, the University of Tulane millennial Marxist movement, and finally, the George Soros' soul losers zombie apocalypse thugs from hell. Be there, standing in that gap. Be there with a body camera on, watching that wall. Be there, rescuing the innocent and defending the helpless. Be there with the mind of Jesus Christ and the full all of God. And most of all, be there on that battlefield, videotaping and taking pictures of all of the local servants of Satan and exposing them on Twitter, Facebook, etc., etc., etc. God bless America. I'm going to be there. I'm going to fight to the death. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good move there, Mr. Engineer, man. All right. Um, let's go ahead to another caller. Brian from Metro, you got any questions for Don Fox or Jim Fetzer? Yes, I wish I had half that energy. <laughs> Yeah, from uh, Dr. Fester, I wish I, I had you're, you're a calling, quarter. Your callers are way too subdued, man. Your callers are way too subdued <laughs> on the show. Um, <laughs> I had told Nate about this before, I believe. About two years ago, I had saw something that I had never seen before in the sky. And then uh, about nine days ago, I did a cross-country all the way to Brownsville with my flight instructor, and we saw it again. It's a... I'm going to try to do my best to explain this because I'm... In my life, most of my life has been around military families and bases. It was a perfectly a perfectly formed triangle. It was like contrails that came together in a millisecond in a perfectly formed triangle, high above commercial jets, well above thirty thousand feet. And it was like the triangle was in 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 a face down to where you were looking at it. Uh, and then in another second, there was a, a, a small contrail line that went through it, like it came through the atmosphere, and the second it entered into the atmosphere, there was a, a single contrail that went through the center of the diamond, I mean, of the of the uh, uh, triangle shape. Wow. And then as soon as it went through the, tr- the, 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 and inside of the triangle, there was just sky. The moment it got, the line got through, the triangle, it separated into four different specific lines, separating, going to, like if it was being targeted from one single line to four single separate targeting. And we saw the same thing when we were flying back from Brownsville, looking out over the Gulf. We, I'm just wondering, and I, I checked the news uh, he checked his sources in, in the Navy if there was any testing from missiles uh, from uh, submarines and there was no land-based launches. I think uh, Raphael is um, a little some, bit familiar with that. Well, I, I personally, I've seen different UFOs that I believe are all man-made. Um, I did see a black triangle before. I have seen that a few years ago. 
But you may want to check out the What is in Our Skies series by Sean Gotro uh, on, on YouTube, where he documents a lot of uh, triangular, uh, just of odd phenomena going on with the clouds and ships or, or yeah, just sometimes invisible or cloaked stuff. Um, I mean, it's not an area I really try to focus on because I'm, a, I'm trying to get legitimacy to the uh, climate engineering issue. But I do follow up on that, and we have seen some strange things, and some people sometimes see them interacting with the contrails slash chemtrails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it, so just I, I, like it, it just seemed like it was a targeting system. Huh. It's, I, it's hard. It, it, from the single line that went through the triangle, it, it merged into, into four separate lines in, in different directions. And, and I, I, I could never... About two years ago, up to up to my, my cross country, I couldn't get anybody to talk about it, and, and it's just it's it's like it's taboo. Nobody wants to bring it up. Yeah. Then came Raphael O'Neill. She's more than happy. That is her subject, Kim Trails, and yeah. Um, yeah but I, I don't really. I, I follow some of the UFO stuff, and and Matt, I know that our technology is more than thirty to forty years. I've even seen invisible planes. I know how does that like looks like Predator or something like that moving through the sky. I know we have all sorts of technology, and it starts back with the uh, Germans and the Vril, and they had the first UFOs that they were making the Germans. Um, I mean, it, history is stranger than fiction for sure. Thank you, Thank you uh, so much. All right. Try, what is in our Skies series? Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, any comments, Dr. Fetzer? Uh, well, uh, Raphael knows so much more about this than do I. I mean, there, there's a lot of bad stuff going on there. The government should cease this completely. I have the impression that they've stopped the artificial drought in California. Now it's absolutely flooded with water. In fact, they've got so much water, it's a problem in and of itself. But at least they seem to have uh, to withdrawn the creation of the high pressure areas that drive away the low pressure that bring water to the region. And it's beginning to assume a normalcy in terms of the weather pattern there, at least. And I heard that there's also now pockets of no air movement in certain places creating high pollution because all the chemicals building up and whatever bacterial fungal stuff, nothing is being cleared through. But they're, they're moving the jet stream around. They can do that. So Yeah, we've got uh, Caleb hit on Skype. You, um, you, you, did you want to jump in there, Caleb? Um, I'm not extremely knowledgeable when it comes to like the geoengineering thing, but except that it's been uh, un very unseasonably warm here in southeast ohio i mean we've been basically in the 60s uh yeah we, we set two records in new orleans the last two days no question about that so don uh any comments on this yeah uh, not that i'm a good ufo expert or anything but i've heard the triangle aircraft are are that that's our stuff that's that's advanced air force uh aircraft that's what i've heard it's almost old now <laughs> yeah well, caleb anything yeah, else my, um with our guest my ufo knowledge is very old so, <laughs> <Very> old. <laughs> so caleb anything else uh no not at this moment i got you all right dr fesser we've got a minute left before our final segment um what's your thoughts on 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 all this i mean i'm not even sure exactly where to go well, I'll just tell you that there's a huge amount out there concerned about uh, the assassination of Trump. Here's an article I'm looking at. Will the CIA assassinate Trump? He's been really dumb for questioning Russia conclusions. That was said by Senator Chuck Schirmer uh, to Rachel Maddow on MSNBC. Here's a key paragraph. It's what they're, they're saying they were willing to let uh, Trump uh, accept the... Uh, uh, privileges and prestige of the office, but not for him to cut into the big business of foreign conflict, the undercurrent of all American affairs, the dealings in death, drugs, oil and weapons, and control of people through the manipulation of these affairs. If President Trump takes his rogue populism too far, he will suffer the wrath of the same people who took out Kennedy. There are some things that are not tolerated by those who are really in charge. You're listening to Battle of New Orleans, WGSO 990 AM, New Orleans. All right, Battle of New Orleans Radio, the station with the hot mics. All right, this is our final segment with Dr. Jim Fetzer and Don Fox. So, Don, anything on your mind that we haven't discussed so far? 
Okay, I just wanted to mention, uh, uh, I was doing a little searching here during the break, and I, I found an article on whiteoutpress.com from 2014, and talks about Denver and the continuity of government. And uh, it says that, uh, uh, I don't know if he's still the mayor, but Michael, uh, Mayor Michael Hancock confirming for the media that the city is in, in fact building an entire aerotropolis or self-sustaining city geographically located in on, above, or below an airport since 2010. The new city will have everything required to sustain a large population, including business and agriculture. The report reminds readers that it's neither a secret nor disputed that the U.S. federal government has always had a secret continuity of government plan in place in the event the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. is destroyed, whether it be overrun by domestic or foreign armies, contaminated by WMDs, or swallowed up uh, by the ocean in the next great flood. If Washington is uninhabitable, the government will relocate to its secret alternate capital, which appears to be in Denver. And the Queen has property there, too. I heard. Queen I has property everywhere. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Fetzer. Well, Paul Craig Roberts, who's our nation's leading public intellectual, has written a very timely column, Can Trump Take Back the Presidency from the CIA? Here is what he wrote. If Trump intends to survive, he must break the CIA into a thousand pieces, as President John F. Kennedy intended, before the CIA assassinated him. Trump must arrest for treason the neoconservatives and put them on trial. Trump must curtail NSA spying, which is in complete violation of the U.S. Constitution, on all communications of all Americans. Trump's oath of office is to the Constitution not to war on the American public. And as an addendum... Russian Insider has published a fascinating and very insightful column. Donald Trump will ruthlessly decimate the CIA for turning on him. NBC and CIA have exceeded all bounds in their attacks on Donald Trump and the Americans who freely elected him their president. They clearly have no idea who they are dealing with. Well, we know what happened the last time that the president decided to shatter the CIA into a thousand pieces. Go ahead, Don. Give us your final thoughts, and we'll be heading on out. Okay, yeah, like I said, I think we're in for a, uh, a bumpy ride. Right. Uh, yeah, there is going to be a lot of conflict, and uh, this is necessary. I mean, the country was going down the tubes, so there's uh, forces that wanted to see that continue to happen. And then there's some of us that were trying to prevent it. And, you know, whatever you think of Trump about his, you know, maybe his Goldman Sachs Treasury Secretary pick or you know, other abominations. I think overall he's trying to save the country, and he's going to face some stiff opposition, particularly amongst the intelligence community. So whether that plays out, you know, on Inauguration Weekend or, you know, as, I, as my gut tells me, maybe a little bit further down the line, it's coming. You know, there's going to be a battle between Trump and the intelligence community and perhaps even the military. Well, good luck to him if that's the case, because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of them. Absolutely. All right, Dr. Fessel, your final thoughts? Well, I think that uh, George H.W. Bush and Barbara faking uh, the, their ailments, uh, fake dying so they have an excuse for not being at the inauguration is an ominous sign. And if others don't appear, uh, if, if, if Bill and Hillary aren't there, and they're, we know Hillary has many doubles, so it would be very easy for her to seem to be there was he's actually some distance removed if Barack and Michelle are somehow unable to make it to the inauguration all bets are off it's going up it's going down it's going to be nuke or it's going to be chemical but believe me bad things are going to happen on Friday well let's say that we do get past it um with all these false flags the uh, Fort Lauderdale airport hoax the Berlin hoax the Istanbul turkey hoax. Um, do you think they will continue if if Trump does make it through the inauguration? No, no, that's been a specialization of Barack Obama, all these fake events, beginning with the start of his second term in 2012. I mean, it's been endless. Uh, Santa Barbara, uh, San Bernardino, Charleston, Orlando, Dallas, it goes on and on. That's all going to end because Trump isn't going to put up with that kind of happy horse shit. It's unreal. It's going to end, Gary. Oh. If Trump is inaugurated, <laughs> things are going to happen so fast it'll make your head spin. 
All right, we didn't get to the uh, eight-second button in time there. Sorry about that. We're on our AM broadcast. So, uh, I hope you're right, Dr. Fetzer. Um, just to let everyone know, tonight the city is meeting for the sustainable, though the master plan, the um, uh, basically the United Nations determining what lands can be used and what they can be used for forward. So we've had the... Uh, well, it's, it's no longer Agenda 21. It's the 2030 Agenda 21. So from what I understand, in Plaquemines Parish, there will be quite a bit of the land or it will be not deemed not worth saving in the future. So you will not be able to get any loans. Won't be able to, you can build there, but at your own expense. So times are going to be tough as far as the um, – well, New Orleans has just taken in every single solitary – um, UN agenda plan from since uh, Mitch Landrew got in there. So, uh, Raphael, go ahead and take us out. Okay. Well, you've been listening to the Battle of New Orleans on WGSO 990 AM with your uh, stand-in co- host Gary King and myself, Raphael O'Neill. Thank you to our guests and thank you. I think. Oh, we got 30 whole seconds here. Good luck to us all. Whatever happens, remember to think for yourself. (laughs) Don't be fooled by the propaganda. And tune in next week. Also, we'll see you there on Friday, right? Friday. With bells on. Yeah, anti-Trump rally. This is WGSO, 990 AM, the true station who does allow the truth here. There's no other station in the city that would allow you to talk like that. We'll see you next time.